Lars Uwe, Talent Development Manager at Bamington Denmark. Um, we've been talking today about talent development. How can Denmark continuously produce uh, world-class uh, players? Does it have a magic recipe? No, it doesn't. And um, as I've talked uh, about one hour about it, and I'm not uh, haven't said everything, so it's 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 a lot of factors, of course, um, history, uh, the size of the country, um, the lot of uh, the good clubs, the um, facilities, the. Uh, huge amount of uh, voluntary work in in the clubs that's uh, and a good structure in the in the federation um, they are some of the factors um, yeah and you have mentioned about the importance of local uh, engagement among others the, the volunteers action how do you manage to keep them motivated but i think that it that's one of the good parts in sport that that it's uh, very rewarding like when you see kids or players um, develop and have fun uh, then it uh, affects your own mood and um, and that's very uh, rewarding actually that's the same thing i experience when when i teach some kids uh, nowadays so it's i think that's that's the biggest factor but then of course uh, the clubs the local communities they uh, they have to provide the conditions uh, so we keep this uh, local engagement and uh, and get these a lot of these uh, volunteer uh, cheap or free hours from um, yeah from the people. And uh, it's been mentioned a few times that it's uh, very important to uh, for the talent development being focused on the on the way but not on the result. And sometimes it's easy to preach but complicated to practice. So how do you inculcate these values, not only uh, among the players, but also the families involved? Yeah, but but we um, we try to preach this, that we focus on the potential, the development, rather than the results. And then the ones who are good at that, uh, the ones who have a big potential and focus on the development, they are also normally the ones who are winning a lot of matches. Uh, but we don't select just after the ranking list, uh, because there are other factors, uh, like... Uh, your relative age, are you born early in the year, uh, are you early developed, are you stronger than the others? Um, so we try to look at the, uh, the full package uh, before we select and we select the players we think can become the best players when they are grown-ups. And uh, <clears throat> we see that there might be, uh, there are other nations actually surpassing Denmark in terms of uh, junior uh, results. Um, how do you see it? How do, does also the Bamington Denmark see it? Yeah, but we actually um, we like that. Uh, the more nations who can produce uh, good badminton players, the better. The better the competition. Um, so that's nice. And we are not um, we are not engaging fully um, in in uh, in that race uh, because we we don't want to optimize our players uh, when they are 15 or 17. Uh, we want them optimized when they are grown-ups, and and uh, we are afraid that if we start uh, specializing too early, then there's a big risk of burnout, um, and and then we don't have them. They don't play badminton when they're 25. So um, it's it's very important that they uh, they like the life they have, um, and they play uh, according to their feelings and what uh, what they want to do. Uh, more than what you have to do in order to win a medal at the under-15 uh, European Championships. And my last question for you, uh, which advices or advice would you give to those coaches that are also working and involved in talent development? Yeah, but that is to, to look on the potential and, and to develop the players and make sure that them themselves and the players have fun uh, on the way because it's um, you can't do something for so many hours that it's needed uh, to become a, a, a top sportsman if you uh, if you don't have fun um, yeah then it gets too boring